official sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The Marshmallow. <laughs> Fixies, why are you so sad? Christmas is just around the corner. Maybe it'll be a lot of fun for you, but not for us. Why is that? Mossy and Papus had a quarrel. Over what? Every year, we've got to repair those string lights. Oh, yeah, it's awful. Christmas is almost here, and there's still so much work to be done. What do you think of that? <laughs> and this! <laughs> here you are. You don't hear the phone ring, you don't answer messages, and we have string lights that aren't working right. We need help. Papus, can't you give us a few more minutes? You said that an hour ago. Haven't you wasted enough time? We are not wasting time! Look at the camera. What? Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Got one of Masia? Look! Oh. <laughs> there you are. So, having a good time? Um, we were just about to leave and... You can stay right here. I've already done everything myself. You obviously have more important things to take care of. Uh, uh. So you left me over there, by myself, working my tail off, just so you can play? Where are you going? To relax. Oh, yeah? Fine with me. So now we won't have... Christmas. Don't panic, Nolik. We'll get your parents to forget. I, I mean to forgive each other. How? My dad always says that the way to a woman's heart is to give flowers and candy. And where are we going to find flowers right now? Oh, we'll make them out of marshmallows. People are always trying to improve recipes. The French used an ancient Egyptian mallow root recipe to create the marshmallow, a fluffy mm. dessert that can decorate a cake or be roasted on an open fire. In Russia, pureed fruit and berries were mixed with egg whites and sugar and then whipped together to create their own fluffy dessert, zephyr. Some ingredients have changed over the years, but mm. these old desserts are still popular. What will they think of next? <sighs> We're gonna set him up on a date. <laughs> Masia's calling for you. It's urgent. Tom Thomas's uh, monitor isn't working. I thought she handles everything herself now. Papu, you're always so kind and love helping others. Come on. Eh. <sighs> All right. No, no, and no. I'm relaxing. I told you. But Tom Thomas won't have time to make his mom's card if you don't go, and then she'll end up without a present. Fine, I'll go. But I'm only going for his mom's sake. Sweets aren't just for eating. They can also be used to decorate a Christmas table. For instance, it's very easy to make this Christmas tree out of marshmallows. Make a row of marshmallows at the bottom of a plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The second row has six of them. The third row, five. Then there's four, three, two, and a special one on top. Add breadsticks at the bottom as a trunk and sprinkle the plate with some sweet confetti. There, it's ready. With the help of some little cookie cutters, it's possible to make hearts and snowflakes out of marshmallows. Or you could make a reindeer. Put a candy cane through a marshmallow, use sugar beads for eyes and a nose, and pretzels for antlers. Beautiful, right? Merry Christmas! I don't get what's going on. The monitor's working. What did you call me for? Uh, I didn't call. Hmm. And you've got nothing for me to do here. No. 
Oh, then I guess you came to apologize? Uh, no. You know what? I have had enough. Uh, well... Huh? What's it say? For Masya? Uh... For me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> That's so sweet. I hope you can forgive me for yelling at you. I'm just tired. No, I should apologize. It was bad of me to leave you alone. And where are the children? It's almost Christmas. There you are. Come here. Papa, <laughs> Masya! <laughs> oh, my sweetie! <laughs> yeah. Hooray! Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! The dishwasher. Can't catch me! You won't catch me! <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Without a care in the world. What? We have more cares than both of you together. Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses has gotta grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? <laughs> the main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer, which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not! It's an experiment! For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah. Uh. Papus, don't argue with your wife. Hey. This one is working. And so is this. You know what? Why don't we just wash those dishes? But that would be cheating. No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. <laughs> Check it out, we are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Masia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. 
Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Because the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! I'm glad I kept dragging this around. Diddy! One... Papus, two, we fixed everything! Really? Does this mean you're playing with him? What? Four, you think we're some quitters? Ha! Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Ready or not, here I come. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team mm. wants you to fix my arm. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of, of cake. cake. Mm. <sighs> the spider. Chusaka, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? I'm petting Chusaka. How come? Because it makes her feel good. Just don't rub her fur off. <laughs> You're just jealous, guys, because you don't have any pets of your own. What do you mean? We've got a pet. yoo -hoo, Buggy! Buggy! She was in the vent the last time I saw her. Hmm. Buggy! Come on out! We need to talk! Here, this is our friend, Buggy! Wait, this insect is really your pet? Ha! <laughs> what a joke! Buggy's a spider! She's not an insect at all! But isn't a spider a kind of insect? Insect is the term used for mosquitoes, flies, beetles, dragonflies, butterflies, ants, and many others! Spiders certainly look a lot like insects. They have very similar legs. But spiders aren't insects. They're arachnids. Insects have six legs, while spiders have eight of them. Many insects can fly, but spiders can't. But spiders can do spider webs. They may look beautiful, but really they are traps for hunting insects. How come your buggy has five legs instead of eight of them? I don't know. <laughs> she lost them somehow. Anyhow, she can do lots of tricks. Hello, buggy. How do you do? We know how to do that trick. Chusaka, shake. Just see that? And I bet your buggy can't do this. Chusaka, sit. Buggy, sit. Why aren't you sitting? Lie down. Your turn. Lie down. Watch me. Like this, lie down. She can't do that trick. Her fifth leg must be in the way. Lie down! Lie down, I told you! What, what kind of pet are you anyway? You can't even do a simple trick! Hey, where are you going? Wait, Buggy, don't go! Nolik, you should be ashamed of yourself! But why is she acting so stupid? <gasps> Didn't you say that she was your friend? And what? Well, you shouldn't yell at your friends like that. She's right. What kind of friend are you? I'll go find her. And apologize. Buggy! Do you hear me? having pets to live with them in their homes. Dogs, cats, hamsters, parrots, fish, turtles. Some folks even get crocodiles. And the bigger the animal, the more work it takes to take proper care of it. But every pet needs love and care, no matter what size it is. Fixies like to have pets, too. All sorts of little bugs, spiders, and flies. Fixies treat them as friends and take care of them. 
course, a little spider isn't as smart as a dog, but they also can be trained. There are some pixies who have managed to domesticate such big insects as bees, beetles, and dragonflies. Pixies fly on their backs and use them to carry heavy loads. That's it. I'm stuck all alone in here. Forever. S Simka? Oh, how did you find me? Buggy let me down here. Buggy, you didn't ditch me. I'm sorry. I promise I'll never ever yell at you again. Ow, my leg. Hang in there, Nolik. We'll get you out. It was so scary. You could have died down there. Yeah, I almost died. But you know what? Buggy saved me. Yeah, that's cooler than learning how to shake hands. Buggy sure is a true friend indeed. Does your leg really hurt a lot? Ah! <gasps> <laughs> nah, it doesn't really hurt. I'm fine. I was just joking. The bird feeder. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Did you hear that? What? Oh, again. Outside the window. There. Huh, a little bird. He's beautiful. Uh-huh. Only he looks sad. Just wait till he sees what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I guess he doesn't think you're funny. That's because he's cold out there. <gasps> he wants to eat, that's all. Maybe we should make a feeder for the poor bird. Do you know how to make a bird feeder? No, but we both know someone who knows everything. Winter, it's not easy for birds to find food under the snow. Luckily, many people come to the rescue. They build little houses for the birds, designed to hold food. The name for these houses are naturally bird feeders. Bird feeders can be made out of wood, plastic, or even something as simple as a milk or juice carton. Building a bird feeder by hand isn't hard to do at all. But building it is only one part of the work. What's most important is remembering to keep it filled with food. Well, shall we start? The bird feeder is ready! And what are we going to put in it? I got an idea. Adisa, I need some of your food for a little bird. You aren't greedy. Greedy! 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 I didn't know Adisa's greedy. Adisa's greedy! You need to learn how to share. Adisa's greedy! What, like there's not enough food? Not enough food! Not enough food! Not enough food! Not enough! Wow! Now there's two of them out there. Eat! There's enough food for everybody! Poor Adisa! Poor Adisa. Let's bring him in here. We can open Adisa's a restaurant a for poor birds. Little bird. Why did you scare the little birds away? That feeder's for them. Get it? Just fly away. Shoo! Uh, 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 uh. He's bullying our friends. Hey, you leave! Leave! You'll never chase him away now. We'll see about that. Aha! Serves you right, Pigeon. It's not nice to bully little guys. Yeah, and how about big guys? It's all right to bully them. The poor Pigeon also wants some food. Food! Food! You sure? Sure! Winter can be beautiful, but also very cold. 
animals have different ways to prepare for when the weather gets cold. Some birds gather into flocks and migrate to where it's warmer. You could almost say they're flying to a resort. Squirrels, hamsters, and chipmunks collect and store nuts, mushrooms, and pine cones. There are many people who don't have pantries that are as well stocked. Badgers and bears eat a lot of extra food in the fall and then go to sleep in their dens and burrows for the whole winter. Fish also sleep in the winter, only they're at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Frogs, snakes, and even wasps burrow in the ground, while hares, foxes, and wolves grow thick coats that protect them from the freezing cold. Although it isn't easy for them to find food, So that will be your feeder, and that new one will be for the little birds. Hey, are you taking their food again? There you go. Huh. But those little birds, they'll probably never come back here. Look, Nolik! <gasps> they came back! camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look! Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas! That's the manipulator! Who? Not who, what? It's a mechanical arm! For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got! But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera! Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas, it's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I am not blocking the view. Stop it, go away. You go away. You go Tom away. Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see you run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. <laughs> now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. <laughs> la 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. <laughs> that was funny. I gotta get going. That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. <sighs> I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. 
Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. <laughs> I can't do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Jamie! The dog. <gasps> it's about me. Fixies? It's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <clears throat> Choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are gonna get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. Choose Sokka. That's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. Service dogs. 
Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> That's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Atta girl, Chusaka. Well done. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. What? Oh, finally, they understand me. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hmm. Someone's late again. Ah, uh, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Whoa! No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. <laughs> Me! 
Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. The oven. Now here he is, our death-defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, no, no! I'm falling! Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! Yeah, I'm just joking. No, like, you're a knucklehead! Zibka! <laughs> <laughs> Tula! We're down here! <laughs> <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all! Need some help? We can manage this ourselves. Right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming! Hi! Hi, Tom Thomas. Hi, Nolik. Are you up for a ride? Because this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat, and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. Oh, it really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here! Yeah, inside of a fresh-baked fixie cake! I don't want to! You think I do? You'll fall off. 
Ah, uh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. You want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We got to find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. Today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Thomas, I think you'll explode. Ow. But it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? I hate cake. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend who's got a really good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> the cell phone. Hmm. Hey, Nolik. Come on out and play. He's not allowed. He was punished. Can you tell me what you did? I grabbed a Pac-Man, and I forgot to ask. How long do you have to sit there? Until Masi and Papus come home from their boo 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 boozness. What did you say? Business. A work trip. They're inside of your father's cell phone right now. They were busy doing repairs in there when he left the house for work. <laughs> do you know the reason why a mobile phone is also called a cell phone? Mobile phones are connected to other mobile phones with the help of special radio stations that are put on top of towers and building roofs. Each one of these stations sends signals to its own area below, and each area is called a cell. A mobile phone works anywhere it can find a nearby station that it can connect to. So as long as there is a station nearby, you can talk as much as you want. You can even move from one cell to another. And without you ever knowing it, your mobile phone will switch from one station to another one. So your conversation can keep on going, even if you're running after a bus or riding on it. Tom Thomas, hello. There you go, my dad came back home already. Hi dad, how are you? Can you believe it? It looks like I lost my phone. What do you mean you lost it? Where? I have no idea. So what? I'm gonna have to sit here forever now? You? Our parents are missing! The phone stopped shaking a while now. We're probably already at home. Uh, uh, not home to me. How can we ever get home to our children? Where's my Masia? Don't whine. We'll work something out. Don't worry. I got a phone. Let's give them a ring. They can't answer your call. But what if they answer us? Call them, Tom Thomas. I... Don't even think it. We're not allowed to talk to humans. We're not going to talk to them. 
We're just gonna listen. We need to close the contacts. It's no use. Oh, they answered the phone. Let me talk. Papus, Marcia, it's me, Simka. Simka? Yeah, Marcia, where are you? In the telephone. The phone part is not what she's asking you. <laughs> oh, it smells a lot like gasoline in here. Ask your father, was he anywhere around gasoline? Dad! Dad, did you go anywhere today where it smells like gasoline? Gasoline? Uh, I had to go to the gas station. That's the place where your telephone disappeared. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I've got... Intuition. Intuition? Intuition, huh? You know what? I'll go check. Come and check out our Fixie ringtone. Telephone is... It's just incredible. You see? I found it. Son, you're one clairvoyant. I didn't notice when it fell out of my pocket back at the gas station. My children! Oh, my Marcia! Papus! Oh, my sweeties! <laughs> so, uh, just by any chance, you think you might happen to know where I can find that nice watch I lost? No. Don't worry, there's no rush. Just use that intuition you've got. <laughs> Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka! Come here, girl! Stop! Don't be scared. Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too. That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it. And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh, write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. 
I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom, Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did you rip your paper out? You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? <laughs> Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. <sighs> the string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, One two, two, three. three. Lights light, light up, up the tree. tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No. Not quite yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are we going to do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia, Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So? Let's find the bad bulb. OK, 
Okay, Papoos, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papus, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh. Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Whew. That was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits lie along. Whoa! And on the tree. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! And on the tree. Ah, nice box. The lights were brighter. Mm -hmm. Every year, but no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. Appears a little miracle before us. Every year on Christmas Eve. 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 The clock it seems. On Christmas Eve. It's ticking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year, but no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive. Yeah! A little miracle before us. Every year, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock takes hours. The ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Starboard! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Uh. Did it break? No, it's all Tidish. It's not close to Tidish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lick! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Ooh, that's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lick, you gotta get out. You'll get sick 
from that stinky air. I can't get loose. I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. I shoot. Well, all right then. Do your homework, and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik. I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik, where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. <laughs> Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. Nolik! Oh no, is he okay? Nolik! No! Do you know who I am? A giant octopus? 